Hello Collider fans, welcome to this awesome video where we're going to talk about Star Trek, something that we all love, especially Star Trek Beyond. I'm Jason Inman, and guys, the movie came out in July, but if you don't know, it's on digital HD right now, and it's going to be on Blu-ray on November 1st. You need to run out there and get it, because I've already bought it on digital HD, and I've been watching it so many times, just like everybody else on my panel, including Ashley Victoria Robinson. Hello! I'm so excited to talk about Star Trek Beyond, and especially to talk about how awesome Jayla is. So cool to get more ladies in the movie. And the lovely Scott Mance. Oh, thank you, number one. It's a pleasure to be sharing the bridge with you two. I love Star Trek Beyond. You know, I really felt like this felt to me more like a Star Trek movie. Not just an action movie, not just sci-fi. Mm -hmm. This felt more like a Star Trek movie than the other two films in the reboot series. You know, there are a lot of reasons why I feel this way. And I'm very, very excited that the movie is finally going to be out on Blu-ray. It's on digital now. But what were the things about this movie that made you feel like this was more like a Star Trek movie. Well, the interesting thing about this movie, and first off, I want to thank Paramount Pictures for uh, giving us all our lovely set decorations here. We're going to go in closer on some of this stuff in a minute. Like, if you look at this communicator that Scott Mance has, look at it, it actually blinks. It was used in the movie. This is so cool. Um, I actually think it's really cool that Collider brought us together, the three strongest Star Trek fans <laughs> of Collider. Could they have gotten a better group of people the, to pop Star Trek yeah, yeah, here? Yeah. Yes. The, 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 the Kirk, the Spock, and the McCoy yes. of Collider videos here. <laughs> uh, but you know, like this movie, like it's the 50th anniversary of Star Trek. Right. And this movie to me felt like a missing episode that we'd never seen before. Yeah, like three it, more. Yeah, it felt like this was maybe between episode like 68 and 69, and we just never realized it. But <laughs> Justin Lin did a really good job. And also, like, one of the things that I loved about it was that it was so colorful. Mm -hmm. It was so colorful. And the design really helped. I mean, especially like if you look at Kirk's costume here. I love this jacket, and if anybody out there wants to be really nice to me this Christmas, they will buy me this jacket. Uh, I, would also <laughs> I would say that that even extends to the poster design, which you can see right behind us here, because that's a callback to the Star Trek, the motion picture poster. Not only is it a nice homage to the movie that really started the entire Star Trek film franchise, but it's beautiful. It's so vibrant. And also the uniforms. Like, look at Uhura's uniform right here. This looks just like the miniskirt. Well, a throwback to the miniskirt mm -hmm. that the ladies wore in the original series. But there are a lot of reasons why this movie did feel like a very big budgeted episode of the original series. Now, there were a lot of things going into this film that, that people were skeptical because they hadn't seen a lot of footage mm -hmm. and everything like that. And Justin Lin, you know, he directed Fast and four Fast and Furious movies. What's he, what's he doing on a Star Trek film? Well, he's a massive Star Trek fan. And I love that in one interview he said that, that all, growing up all his friends were Star Wars people. He was the Star Trek guy. We that, all know that in our We hearts. all know, we that. know that. That's, that's what I felt when I was a kid and I still feel that way now. That's us in the collider groups right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> like, they're all like Star Wars and we're like, no Star Trek. Star Trek. Yeah. Listen, I will shoot you with this crawl minion device. Uh, <laughs> I will call you with this communicator that looks very much like an iPhone. And then I'm going to turn the phaser to kill. To kill. And I'm going to take all of them out. Jedi Council, I'm coming for you. But Did also, you know, the other thing about this film where I really started to kick in, I was like, okay, I'm in with this. So it takes place 966 days into the five-year mission. You know Nine, the exact day. Well, 966 is when Star Trek premiered, September 1966. Uh -huh. um, uh -huh. Aha! Yeah, yeah, but but it, it came a day later in the United States. In Canada, we got it a day early. Okay, well, so. <laughs> officially, it was Fun September fact, 8, William 1966. Shatner, also Canadian. Yes. <laughs> well, there you go, Montreal. But there is, so, so after the beginning of the scene, after the beginning of the movie, when he does his captain's log, and he starts, he says, you know, things are starting to feel a little episodic, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. ha ha. <laughs> but also the scene between Kirk and McCoy where they're having the drink and they're, you know, Kirk is getting all philosophical, like what's this all mean? What's this all about? Remember that scene in Balance of Terror? when McCoy goes into Kirk's quarters and Kirk is feeling, he's, he's feeling the burden of command. And he goes, <laughs> why me? That was a scene that could have been in any Star Trek episode between Shatner and D. Kelly, but it was Chris Pine and Carl Urban. And it was, I pointed to the screen when I was watching this movie and I went, that is Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> I think one of the ways that the movie succeeds as well is it builds on a lot of the ideas that we saw introduced in the original series. Like there's always a magical alien and it's usually a female magical alien. Now in the 1960s, they didn't always get to take a very active or a very lead role, but because now we're in 2016, when we meet Jay 
Shayla for the first time. Not only does she save Scotty's life hilariously, she has a better understanding of his native language than he does. And then she also takes control basically for the entirety of the movie. And she even brings everyone to the Yorktown, which visually was my favorite part of the whole movie was seeing what the base looked like. It was just so cool. Well, the other reason, the other thing that made it feel like a throwback <laughs> is, and this is no spoiler for anyone who has not yet seen the film, but now is your chance to watch the movie because it is available on digital and it is available <laughs> on Blu-ray and DVD. But I digress. When you realize what the motive is, when you realize who Crawl, mm -hmm. played by Idris Elba, really is, it made me think of some of the classic episodes of the original series. I'm not going to say which ones. Again, no spoiler. But I literally was watching the film for the first time, and I slapped my forehead going like, oh, my gosh, this feels just like the original series. The other thing is the chemistry, the magic. Mm -hmm. Chris Pine, Zachary Quinto, uh, uh, Zoe Saldana, Simon Pegg, they have such great chemistry, as they should now, because it is their third film together. Mm -hmm. But they had that chemistry from the beginning, and that's magic. It's hard to replicate well, that. Well, speaking of the other magic, the coolest thing about this is that Star Trek Beyond is not only the closest to the original series. For me, and I've watched it uh, three or four times now, it has, I think, the most Star Trek Easter eggs of oh, any yeah. Star Trek oh, movie of all sure. time. There are references to every single other Star Trek series in this, like including the USS Franklin being a massive uh, U uh, Enterprise, Star Trek Enterprise uh, Easter egg. Mm -hmm. There's also the Admiral who's called Paris. Thomas Paris was a character on, so on Voyager. <laughs> and there's specific mentions of uh, the Zindi, mm -hmm. which were the big enemy of Star Trek Enterprise. So it was like those little touches being like having a nice little flavor uh, of TOS, like you were just like, this is the perfect uh, TOS movie and, or, or the 50th anniversary movie. But we also got a chance to feature some characters that haven't been featured as much either in the show or in the movies. We got a lot of stuff about uh, Anton Yelchin's Chekhov character and about Sulu and uh, the, this, the fact that Anton Yelchin is no longer with us, this was a really beautiful send off to him as an actor. He got some incredible things to do and it gives the character a lot of depth that had never been seen before on screen. And also getting a lot more screen time than he did in the other two mm -hmm. films. Carl Urban as McCoy. Fabulous. In fact, <laughs> you know, with the first two films really focused on the relationship between Kirk and Spock, this film focused on the relationship between Spock and McCoy. And that really provided for some of the best moments of the original series. Who can forget scenes like in Bread and Circuses? You know, this is the one, <laughs> the planet of the Romans, yes. <laughs> when they're in the jail cell and uh, McCoy says, I know why you're not afraid of dying. You're more afraid of living. You're, more, you're afraid that that's one more moment where you're gonna slip and show an emotion and Spock doesn't say anything. He goes, McCoy goes, yeah, I know, I'm worried about Jim too. You know, there was magic like that. I really felt like Simon Pegg, who co-wrote the screenplay, and Justin Lin really did capture the tone mm -hmm. of the original series, but still making it worthy of being a cinematic film that costs a whole lot of money. Well, speaking <laughs> of the tone, uh, Scott, I know you're a very old school Star Trek yes, fan. Yes, I am. Like really, really, <laughs> like you love, you li live and breathe the original series. It's my fave. Let's take a look at this phaser right here. Yes. Now, this phaser, um, now, of course, when they made the J.J. Abrams movies, they changed the designs, mm -hmm. okay? Um, now, as an old school Star Trek fan, do you like this design? Like, I how do. do you feel about it? Like, because I love the switch between uh, stun and kill. That was cool. Yeah, that was yeah. cool. When you see when you see this thing go back and forth, and it switches between stun and kill. I'm guessing that the red is kill because you know red yes. is and stun. <laughs> it's, you know, maybe not as you know forceful, but the look of the phaser goes back to the original show. Mm -hmm. And up to this point. Even though the other the other movies and the other television shows have had their own versions of the phaser, my favorite was always the original series phaser. Which also sort of apes the ship design in the front as well, where the disc for the, the photon torpedoes comes from. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Now, oh, that's right. You're right. That's I am point. right. Way to go. <laughs> I am. Oh, you do about. know. Give it up. That is awesome. <laughs> but, but I do love this look because it does harken back to the original series phaser while also being very current and different because they could push that button to make it flip between stun and kill. You know, here's something else uh, that, I, that I noticed since uh, Paramount gave us this to it. I didn't notice this in the movie. If you look right here, you can see the Starfleet Delta insignia and yeah. it's kind of like it's the earpiece right there. I never saw that yeah, in, the, in the movie mm -hmm. in Anywhere. And then that's really cool that it's like the, the Starfleet Delta right there. I think it's so if you want to keep it closed, you can still talk through it and you can hear whoever you're trying to ring on the other end. <laughs> oh, that's really cool. Uh, um, so in terms of Star Trek Beyond, somebody, let's say there's somebody out there, they haven't seen the movie yet. 
They're um, wrong. What would, you say, <laughs> what would you say, Ashley, what would you say in, in, a, in a couple sentences or so to sell them on seeing Star Trek Beyond? All right, friend I, who inexplicably hasn't seen this yet. The reason you want to go, go see, how are we friends if you haven't seen it? Uh, if, the reason you should go and see Star Trek Beyond is because, and I'm imploring you on this, it is one of the most alien Star Trek movies that we've had to date. We don't go back to or to Earth. The Earth never gets threatened. You get to see the expanded universe, and you get a really clear sense of why each and every member of the crew is important. And I promise, Carl Urban is going to make you laugh. Okay, for me, uh, it's a great action film. It is fun. It is cool. The characters are great. The chemistry is great. The payoff is a surprise. It's just a great action movie. It's a fun film, whether you love Star Trek or not. It's not just a great Star Trek movie, it's a great movie, period. But it also is a great Star Trek movie and, and the most Star Trek movie of the three. So I think it's a movie that fans will love and I think it's a movie just, that, that, that just anyone who just wants to watch a movie and have a great time will love. So do that now and make it so. For, for me, one of my, some of my favorite episodes of Star Trek were always the away missions. And this seemed like the ultimate away mission into the unknown. And that's why, like, for me, it's easily my, my favorite of the, the post-JJ uh, uh, Star Trek films. And I really dug it. And that's why uh, you need to go get it on Blu-ray November 1st. It's on digital HD. I literally have watched it on digital HD, I think, three or four times already. <laughs> uh, thanks so much to my uh, guests, Ashley Victoria Robinson, Scott Mance, and thanks a lot to Paramount Pictures for hooking us up with these cool, cool props to show off to you guys. Uh, any day we get to talk about Star Trek, is it's awesome a day. day. It's a good day. <laughs> so I think all we can say is we all need to uh, uh, throw up our hands like this and say live, live long, long and, and prosper. prosper. Hey guys, if you like this video, <laughs> click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider. <laughs>